Welcome back guys to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. In this video, I wanna cover four ways for you to expand your pipe tobacco collection. Now, I rarely show my tobacco seller uh, or simply collection of what I do have, but as you can see, I, I have a, a modest collection that has taken me years to build up. Um, I've been blessed uh, with acquiring some by some of you guys sending it my way, but I can tell you only about 10% of that is what, you know, call it free tobacco. Most of it has been gathered by me in various ways and has cost me. Um, and, and you know, most, most of you know, you can go on social media with Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or even, uh, well, even YouTube as of here, and you can find guys who have an amazing collection of pipe tobacco that dwarfs even what I have. Um, and so jumping into this topic, ways to expand your tobacco seller, I want to cover a point that's, well, it's not so much about shopping wise, but it may be one of the most important uh, aspects of this topic. And that is slow acquisition. The temptation for especially newer pipe smokers, and I'm gonna say even young pipe smokers, and I, that, that would have included me, um, is you see these guys with this vast array of pipe tobacco, or you see what I have, and I, you want that. And, and you're, you want it so, so badly that you, uh, you try to speed up the process, you don't practice delayed gratification, and uh, you spend money you shouldn't be spending on it, uh, whether that's at worst, going into debt, you know, putting it all on credit, or simply just ignoring other aspects in your life that take priority or should take priority, and you get yourself in a financial bind. Uh, guys, it, it's not worth it. I love this hobby as much as anyone else, but be wise with your purchases. All right. Uh, again, using me for an example, um, what I do have has taken years to put together. Um, and, in, and in some areas, I was slowly decreasing the amount of tobacco I have. And other times I was able to store even extra, but be patient with it. Most guys you see, uh, it's taken years for them to build what they have as well. Maybe some of them made poor financial decisions, but uh, regardless if they did or not, you need to make proper financial decisions. So put priorities in your life. Get tobacco when you can get it all right and following these next steps that will be a help for you in making fi you know wise financial decisions so number one before we go on slow acquisition just be slow and getting um, and building up your collection but then going on to number two hitting sales uh, it is a very obvious one but it needs to be stressed because we can buy uh, uh, for instant gratification, right? You you see Wilson talk about a, I got right here, um, gentleman's rum, rum vanilla that I just reviewed. And uh, you, you see a blend I talk about and even if you don't have the financial, you're not in a good financial spot to buy it, you're gonna buy it because they're talking about it. Well, just at times you should wait and hit the sales instead. Yeah, of course, there are times where there is limited edition blends, and I understand that can kind of go crossways with this uh, this tip. But most blends out there, most blends, 99% of them are blends that are usually regularly available, and there's always a sale going on uh, on some online retailer, uh, whether that's 20% off GLP's blends or 15% uh, off McBaron uh, bulk blends, or maybe there's a, a website wide sale uh, that's on International Pipe Smoking Day or near Christmas, uh, what have you, and you can get a 10, 15% off every pipe tobacco uh, that you would desire. Uh, all that to say, hit the sales, wait and, and build up your uh, your, your tobacco funds that you've been setting aside and, and find those sales where you can save a decent amount of money. So, you know, if you hit a 20% off sale, well, you can buy $100 worth of tobacco and save $20. So you could add, on average, two extra tins of tobacco there. Uh, it's well worth it. And that's what I've done most of all in acquiring my tobacco. I just wait for sales. Um, I, I know what I like and I hit them. Or maybe there's a blend I want to try, so I throw it into my shopping cart, what have you. Um, but hit those sales and wait, instead of buying a blend I reviewed, wait until they come up and, and use that time and opportunity. So hit sales for your benefit. Uh, going on to number three though, uh, making bulk purchases. Now what I mean by that is uh, hitting a number, which uh, usually most of these websites have, where you can get free shipping, all right? It, it, it may not seem like a big significant difference, but shipping's usually eight to 10, $15, depending on where you live. 
And, and that again is a tin of tobacco. So if you make a purchase every say two to three months, well, that adds up over the years or over a year. That's four or five times you make a, uh, you make an order that's you know, $40, $50 of shipping costs and that's four to five tins of tobacco on average or maybe even more tobacco if you're buying you know, bulk blends, but what have you. Get up to that number, you know, put your funds aside and maybe you can even set it up with a, a free uh, or a, a, uh, a sale that's going on with a type of blends or multiple blends and, and safe shipping in that regard. Some websites are $75, some are like $99, you get free shipping, but regardless, uh, keep in mind that number, keep in mind those sites you prefer to buy from and wait for uh, you to collect the right amount of funds and, and uh, save that extra money so it can go towards pipe tobacco instead of shipping a box to you. All right, so number three, make bulk purchases for your benefit. And then finally, number four, buy bulk blends. All right, and what I mean by bulk blends is blends that don't come in a tin, but blends that come in say a, a pouch um, or they, they come in a box. Say um, what you find here is is H and H Virginia Flake that I, that I purchased uh, not long ago, near the end of last year on a sale. And I bought a pound of it and I knew I love it. It's a, it's a great blend. Um, and so I bought it in bulk and it saved me a lot of money. Um, it, when you buy in bulk, whether it's just one or two ounces or it's as much as I buy, you can get it for uh, quite a, a bit of a discount compared to 10 blends because you're saving money on packaging and things like that. So um, keep in mind bulk blends instead of, well, 10 blends. And I know I usually just review 10 blends and that's probably to a fault. I need to review more bulk blends. Um, but 10 blend or bulk blends can save you money and they can be wonderful blends. Uh, for instance, H&H Virginia uh, Flake or H&H Burley Flake. Peter Stokeby Luxury Burley Flake or uh, Navy Flake. Uh, Peter Stokeby Bullseye Flake or Twist Flake, what have you. Those are just a few for you to think about next time you want to make a tobacco purchase. So bring those together then. Um, hit a sale, you know, collect your funds, hit a sale. Uh, and you know, get over the $75, $99 mark and you really can save a lot of money, guys. Make hundreds of dollars of difference in a year depending on how much you're buying. So, and all that to say, there are ways to save money. There are ways to make a, a grand purchase uh, or make a grand collection of tobacco and have some store for years to come. And let me, let me just end with this. Why, why does it matter to put tobacco away or collect. Maybe you're thinking, just, just buy when you need it, right? Just, I need a pin of tobacco, I'm gonna smoke this, and when I get done with this tobacco, I'll buy another. And that's what people have done for decades, and there's nothing wrong with that. But just two aspects to keep in mind on this. Number one, when we can sell our tobacco and have it improve with age. I've covered that, you can find videos from me on that matter. But number two, we live in an era where governments, and even in the United States, it's worse than other countries, but in, in the United States where taxes are always a threat to our tobacco purchases. Right now, we have this wonderful blessing of buying tin tobacco for 10, 12, 16, $18, depending on the more expensive ones. Uh, and and that's, that's quite cheap compared to other places. But think about a time coming where they all of a sudden put the hammer down and now that $12 tobacco tin is now $40. Um, that, that can be a great possibility, all right? So that's another reason why we should consider storing tobacco is um, if, if the hammer comes down and tobaccos skyrocket, well, you and I are not gonna wanna buy so much tobacco, but hey, we have a number of years put away of tobacco that we can enjoy for some time. So keep those things in mind. And it's helpful not to rush and break the bank, uh, not to put us in a bad financial situation, but if we have the luxury of putting some money aside in a fun, in, in, uh, tobacco budget, we should do that and use it. Uh, and use these tips to uh, buy it on the cheap so we can have enjoyment later. If you have suggestions, wisdom, tips, what have you, please share them with me, share them with others uh, so we can benefit from it as well. Well guys, that's all I have this week. I hope you're doing well and you're blessed and we'll talk to you very soon.